Hey everyone, Devin Martin here, and today I want to share about how to be proactive as a projector. So I've written down four simple and practical steps to be proactive as a projector. So this may sound a little bit confusing or a different approach to how to navigate as a projector type. If you are a projector or you love a projector and you've been studying human design or experimenting with it, then you'll know that the strategy for the projector type is to wait to be recognized and invited before offering guidance. So the slogan here is not here to work, here to guide. So normally, what I've noticed is that when projectors hear this, there's just kind of this sense of relief. You know, we're like, oh great, I knew I wasn't really here to work the way that I've been working and yes, I love guiding. Or, or there can be this, oh shit, and we can feel disempowered, right? We can feel like, well, what am I gonna do? Or how do I live my life if I have to be invited? So I think this is a really important topic and I wanna talk about it because it's been coming up for me. I've been having conversations with my friends about this. And also I've received so many comments and emails about this topic of projectors being confused. Well, if I'm not here to work and I'm here to guide, then what should I do for work? I need to make money or if, if, I, if I haven't been invited to make my website for my business, then should I not make my website? Or I've also heard, I want to travel and I feel this call to travel, but I'm, I'm not, I don't feel, you know, there wasn't a direct invite to travel. Should I still do it? And I think this is such an interesting thing to talk about. And there are practical ways to be proactive and to prepare and ready ourselves to be in alignment and to feel successful and be ready for those really big important invites that come in our lives. So the first step, number one, master your craft and do what you love. So as projectors, we have this inner fascination with people and systems and we're here to master. We have this laser focused awareness that really digs deep into things and that's our specialty. That's our specialty and that's usually what we're recognized and invited for. So for example, I love human design. I love personality systems and I love learning about the human experience. It gives me joy and I love it. So when I'm immersed in what I'm doing and when I'm in the world and I'm meeting people and people ask me what I do, I tell them. And because I'm engaged with my craft and mastering it over time, it opens myself up to be in alignment with what I love and people naturally want to invite me, okay? Now the other side of that is if we can feel disempowered, like we have to wait or we don't know how to go and live our lives, then it can isolate us, we can feel depressed, we can feel disconnected with, with others or the life force of the planet, or, you know, so this confused state can really stop us from engaging in what we love. So what I would say is do what you love, go where you wanna go, keep showing up, do you. As projectors, our aura <laughs> literally is saying, invite me. <laughs> I have something to share, right? And the, the, the wisdom here is to get comfortable with not having to give our advice, right? Holding it back, just doing what we love, showing up, and the people do come. So it's do what you love, the invites will come. Number two, self-recognition. So, we are interactive beings. We see out into other people. Our specialty is one-on-one -on -one work or understanding the other, which can sometimes take us away from our own self-recognition or really seeing our value and our potency and what we offer. So what I would say about this is that when we are really in tune with who we are, what we're here to offer, or just what we bring to the table, you know, like our gifts or what we're good at, when we can recognize ourself, then we can arrive already full. We can arrive already self-recognized. We can arrive loved. We can arrive saying, I know I'm good at this, or I feel like I, I'm great at this, or I love doing this. And that creates this energy field around us that pulls people towards us and they say, I want some of that, or, you know, or then they recognize us. And it also sets us up to be in awe and to be surprised about the recognitions that come into our life. So number three, 
master your authority and get really comfortable with saying no. Now, this can be one of the hardest things for projectors, okay? When I first started my experiment, I really radically stopped initiating, which was important for me because I really needed to understand in my body what it felt like to um, be engaged with, to be invited, that kind of thing. And I was really hitting a lot of resistance because I was really charging through life and, and doing everything I thought I had to do. But I was really tired and things just weren't working or I would hit walls when I would try to offer people advice. So what's important about this is that with human design, it's not this moment by moment invite for us. It's the big stuff. It's the who we're in a relationship with, where we, what we do for work, you know, these big things, where we live, that kind of thing. So on the day to day piece of this, when we master our authority, we get in touch with our body. We're aware of what our body is saying on a day to day basis, whether we're with people or we're not. And we start to tap into the power inside of us when it comes to making decisions. So for example, when I'm by myself, I don't need to be invited to, to pick what I eat or to go out and go to a store that I want to go to, right? I need to trust my authority. And my authority is the G center. It's my sense of self. I'm a self projector. So for me, that's how I express myself, what I say and the direction I feel pulled in. So, Pay attention to your authority. What is it? I mean, projectors are a complex type. We have lots of different inner authorities as projectors. So master that. Feel into your authority. Start experimenting with that. How does your body feel about how you are engaging with that person? How does your body feel when you're eating that food? How does your body feel in that environment? Okay, practice that. Because when the invites come, you're going to need that sense of inner power to navigate that. So start experimenting with it. And then on the other side of that is get really comfortable with saying no. So in the beginning of my experiment, I, because I stopped, you know, initiating, whenever there was an invite, whether it was good or bad, or, or <laughs> good for me or not, or it was a real invite or not, I got really excited and I would feel like I wanted to do that thing. Now with projectors, we need to be highly discerning about what invites we take because we have a laser focused energy. It is a precious energy and we have value to add and the people we're with make up who we are. We take in and absorb energy. If it's the right invite, we feel successful, empowered, engaged, nurtured, like there's a beautiful exchange that's going on. And we all know what it feels like on the opposite end, which is draining, disempowering, exhausting and bitterness. So, the more comfortable you are with saying no means that, that it's saying yes to self. So when we say no to invites that aren't aligned with us, then we're empowering that self-love and that self-recognition. So there's a quote in an ebook that I absolutely love from Richard Rudd, and he says, have, having faith in yourselves, if having faith in yourself means you have to have the courage to turn down opportunities that are not 100% perfect. And for you, only 100% recognition will do. So listen to your body, please experiment with it and get comfortable with saying no. And it's okay to say no. And last but not least, number four is take care of yourself. So in the meantime, when you're doing your thing, when you're mastering what you love, when you are alone, right? Learn how to take care of you. I mean, we love helping and working and engaging with other people. It's our specialty, right? It's what makes us feel alive when it's the right dance. And, but we also need to learn how to take care of ourselves. And everybody and every type has their own way that they need to nurture and take care of themselves. So for me, it's been this radical road of like really learning how to take care of who I am. And when I'm not taking care of me, I, you know, I, I don't feel good and I don't really feel like the, the invites or life is in flow the same way. So as a projector, when you can really nourish your way, your flow, resting when you need to rest, going to bed when you go to want to go to bed, you know, taking that nap or whatever, whatever it is for you, right? Um, or going to get that massage or, you know, 
eating that ice cream, you know, whatever it is. Start to write down things that make you feel good, make you feel like you're taking care of you, that you love yourself, that you're listening to yourself. Because as we engage with the world, as we step out into the world, as we, you know, apply for our work or we are invited to do our work, it's very important that we take care of ourselves because it can be so easy to get lost in the other. That's like one of the projector traps is we get lost in the other and we totally, we're not paying attention to ourselves. And in the highest essence of this, this is really a beautiful gift that we have to really be able to see, help, guide, and focus out on the other. But if we're not standing on our own two feet, if we don't know how to give that love and that attention to ourselves, it can really throw us off balance when we're doing our work in the world, no matter what that is. So those are the four steps to being proactive as a projector. That means being engaged with life, being aware of life, being ready for those invites that come and change the direction and the course of our lives. So. As a little recap, master your craft and do what you love. Self-recognition, master your inner authority and get really good at saying no, and take care of yourself. So that's my quick, quick little download for today about being proactive as a projector. I hope that helps you or hopes gives you a little bit of encouragement in your path as a projector. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like and a comment. So if there's anything that stood out to you, please let me know. And if there's any questions or burning topics that you really want to understand about human design, uh, leave them in the comments and I will try to get to them or make another video on that topic. So thanks so much for tuning in today and take care of yourself. Lots of love.